I wanted to comment on today's first reading from the first book of Samuel. So notice or, or recall that Samuel had selected Saul to be the first king, and Samuel was doing this uh, based on the inspiration of God. So it's really God who picked Saul to be the first king for the Jewish people. And in many ways, he was very successful, but he obviously had some flaws. And one of his flaws was that he disobeyed God. And so uh, Samuel comes to Saul to point out to him that he was disobedient to the Lord. And because of this, he can no longer be king. In other words, he's lost the favor of the Lord. And what, what is it that Saul did that caused him to lose the favor of the Lord? Well, I mentioned it was disobedience. And in particular, we, we have the allusion to it in today's first reading. So basically, God had instructed Saul to go and, and to fight against the Amal Amalekites and to destroy everything of the Amalekites, not to take any spoil, not to take the booty of, of war. So in other words, leave everything. Don't, don't have anything to do with the enemy or with their belongings. But Saul and his men, his, uh, his army, they took the booty. And they make the excuse, well, they're going to use these sheep and these oxen, you know, to sacrifice to the Lord. And if you think about it, you know, imagine two people going to sacrifice in the temple and they're both bringing a little sheep, let's just say, and, and one of them says, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice your sheep instead of mine. What kind of sacrifice is that? It's not a sacrifice at all. So you're taking something that belongs to someone else and sacrificing it. In other words, you're not sacrificing from your own possessions, from your own belongings. But not only that, our Lord points out, or God points out, that he, he takes greater delight, or he doesn't delight in sacrifices so much. It's the obedience that he requires. And why does he require this obedience? Not because he needs it. He doesn't need our obedience. It doesn't benefit him but because he wants it to benefit us. And in fact, that's also why he, he had asked for sacrifices to make people realize that they need to be focused on God and, and not the things of this world. So God wants us to be obedient to him because he wants us to be happy. He wants to bless us. It's when we are disobedient that we bring misery upon ourselves and also upon those around us. Now, notice this passage where he says, where um, in the book of Samuel, it says, For rebellion is no less a sin than divination, and stubbornness is like iniquity and idolatry. So when we rebel against God, you know, there's different ways in which we rebel against God. I mean, imagine idolatry, worshiping a false god. It's clearly a rebellion against God, but every sin is a rebellion against God. So the ideal is we strive to root sin out of our lives and, you know, not just mortal sin, but, but even venial sin, because these little sins, they can lead to other sins and sometimes even, even mortal sins. So why is it that Saul, you know, ended up doing this? Well, because he had some flaws. He wasn't careful. So it led to a big act of disobedience on his part. And when it comes to kings or people in influential positions, God is going to exact more from them because it's not just King Saul who's committing the sin, but he's allowing his army, his soldiers, his people to commit this very same sin. He's responsible for that. He could have prevented that, but he did not. And so he's, he's much more uh, culpable, much more blameworthy. So he lacked self-control, basically. Why was he disobedient to God? Because he wanted to do something selfish. He wanted to do what he knew would please the people. Uh, so he wasn't following God's will. He lacked self-control. And this is an issue with all of us. All of us lack self-control to a certain extent. And it's important that we strive to gain greater self-mastery, greater self-control. And there's different ways in which we do this, partially by being well-disciplined, following a routine, following a schedule, disciplining ourselves that way, but also practicing self-denial, denying ourselves certain goods that we could do without 
or striving to be less worldly, to be more focused on the spiritual life. And this brings me to today's gospel reading, which is about the topic of fasting. And notice how our Lord points out that even though his disciples are not fasting at present, once he is taken away from them, then they will fast. And you know what, I, I, I always like to point out that in one sense, the disciples of our Lord were already practicing self-denial because they had le left their homes and, you know, following our Lord, going to different places. In many ways, they had to endure all kinds of hardships. Sometimes they had to sleep out in the open. Sometimes they may not be able to have sufficient food. Um, so so they, they were already practicing self-denial. And our Lord gives this little analogy that, that a lot of people find confusing. And part of what our Lord is saying is that, um, you know, this analogy of, of the um, cloak, you know, no one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloak, otherwise the patch pulls away. Well, it's kind of obvious, right? Or no one puts new wine to old wineskins because it will burst. So the wine will ferment, it will expand. The, the old wineskins wine aren't capable of expanding as new ones are, so it will burst the wines. And basically our Lord is trying to say, what our Lord is trying to say is, you need to have a new approach to this, so even a new approach to fasting. So why was it that the Jewish people fasted? You know, there were a number of reasons, but fasting is sometimes an expression of sorrow. So, you know, when somebody um, is devastated at a great loss, sometimes they're so sick to heart that they cannot eat. Sometimes when we do something wrong, we're, we're just so upset, we can't eat. And so to show sorrow, people would fast. But there's many benefits to fasting. There's physical benefits, there's certainly spiritual benefits, but one of the benefits of fasting is that it enables us to have greater self-control, greater self-mastery. So in other words, when we're fasting and we're saying no to food, the food is kind of like a temptation. So we learn the ability, we, we gain the strength, we, we acquire the ability to say no to temptation. And that will help us when we are tempted in other areas of our life. But not only that, fasting can enable us to have greater self-control so that we're more diligent, we're able to do the things that we're supposed to do to get done our, our spiritual reading or our prayers or, or whatever it may be, you know, getting to work on time for some people. So we need to have this self-mastery, this self-discipline. And unless we have this self-discipline, we cannot be content, we cannot be happy. You know, one of the other benefits of fasting is that it withdraws us from worldly things. It enables us to focus more on the things of God. A lot of people, when they fast, they say it's, it's so much easier to pray, so much easier to be focused. So it's not just during Lent that we practice self-denial. We're called to be, um, we're called to mortify ourselves throughout the year. And others, we shouldn't just be individuals who indulge in whatever we feel like. Oh, you feel like having a snack, go and have a snack. Well, no, try to be disciplined. Try to do things according to right reason. Okay, I'm gonna have a snack at a certain time in the afternoon because otherwise I might be too tired or whatever, All right? So try to follow right reason. Live according to reason as opposed to living according to our passions. When we live according to our passions as well, what do I feel like doing now? Oh, I don't know. I'll just put my feet up and relax. No, try to have a plan. So there might be time for relaxation, for entertainment or whatever, but try to follow uh, a good routine that you decide for yourself so that we are masters of ourselves and that we learn self-mastery which will benefit us in the spiritual life and it will also benefit us in our relationships.